Hey everybody, Scott here with Active Realty and the Janung team here with our Temecula Market update for the month of October. Welcome back to my channel everybody, especially to my new subscribers. So glad to have you here, thank you for the support. Doing things a little bit differently this month as we count down the neighborhoods from highest median sale price to lowest median sale price in this changing market. After I go through the neighborhoods in Temecula, stick around with me till the end and I'll show you some data for Murrieta and Menifee as well and how they compare to Temecula in the grand scheme of things. Including yet another statistic that hasn't been seen in Temecula since 2008. If you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, hit that button down below to never miss market updates, neighborhood tours, and so many other things about the housing market going on here in the Temecula Valley between Temecula, Murrieta, and Menifee. And just in case you missed last week's video, I'm pinning it here, it's the pros and cons of living in Temecula. If you watch my market updates, you know that generally I will break down each neighborhood according to categories based on the number of bedrooms each home has. This time around, I'm taking a more holistic approach and we're just going to look at median price for each neighborhood and count down from the lowest median price to the highest median price, beginning with neighborhood number 11 and then counting up to the number one spot, which will have the highest median sales price as of September, 2022. I'll also be throwing in how many homes went for under asking price in the form of a percentage. So be watching for that figure as well. Coming in at number 11, we have Vintage Hills, where the median sales price was $639,000. 100% of the sales in the month of September went for under their original list price. Up next at number 10, we have Paloma del Sol, which also had a median sales price of $639. However, I'm putting this slightly higher on the countdown than Vintage Hills because it does have a slightly higher average sales price for the month of September. Also, with 100% of the homes sold last month going for under their original list price. Coming in at number nine, we have Chardonnay Hills at $660,000. Now this is the average sales price because only two homes sold last month in this neighborhood and neither of them went for under their original asking price. Coming in at number eight, we have Wolf Creek where the median sales price was $688,000 with 86% of all listings going for under their original list price. Coming up next at number seven, we have Temecu Hills, where the median sales price is now going to break $700,000. That was the median price for homes here last month, half of which went for under their original list price. Up next at number six, we have Vale Ranch, where the median sales price last month was $728,000, and 100% of the homes that sold last month went for under their original list price. Coming in at number five, we have Paseo del Sol, where the median sales price was $730,000, 60% of the homes in here went for under their original list price. Up next, number four, we have Crown Hill, which similar to Chardonnay Hills, only sold two homes last month. So we have an average here of $765,000, zero of which went for under asking price. Both went for at least their list price or higher. Crown Hill and Chardonnay Hills are the exception to the rule here where you're going to see with every other neighborhood, the majority of the homes that sold last month went for under their original list price. Cracking into the top three, we have Morgan Hill, where the median sales price was $820,000. Half of these homes went for under their original list price. The number two spot on the countdown goes to Red Hawk, where the median sales price was $850,000, and 80% 80 of these homes went for under their original list price. And finally, making its debut on my market report and coming in at the number one spot, we have Summer's Bend. Summer's Bend had a couple home sale last month. The median sales price was $860,000, but 100% of those listings went for under their original asking price. Now I want to transition and show you some statistics, not only from Temecula, but also from Murrieta and Menifee. I chose these data because I believe they tell us a story in ways that some other data do not, and really paint the picture for how the market is truly looking as of September, 2022. First, I wanna mention days on market. Back in April, in Temecula, Murrieta, and Menifee, the average days on market was seven days. So homes were hitting the market and going under contract in about a week. In September, the average days on market has now boosted to 20 days in Temecula, 25 days in Marietta, and 25 days in Menifee. So we're looking at homes on the market on average in all three of these cities for three weeks or more, depending on where you're looking. Up next, I want to mention sales price, the median sales price across these three cities. I broke Temecula down into very specific neighborhoods, uh, but across the board, we're looking at Temecula at $725,000. Murrieta at $628,000 and Menifee at $565,000. Median sales price, 
as of September 2022. By comparison, in Temecula in April, that was the height of the market this year, it was about $748,000. In Marietta, the median sales price peaked at $680,000 in June, and in Menifee, the prices peaked in May at $591,000. Now I want to mention total closed sales in the month of September. I want to start by looking at the maximum number of closed sales in any given month this year. We'll start in Temecula where 208 listings closed in the month of March, 269 listings closed in the month of March in Murrieta, and 231 closed in April in Menifee. By comparison, here are the numbers for September. In Temecula, 107 listings closed. This is the lowest number of closed listings since February 2008 in the city of Temecula. In Marietta, only 145 listings closed last month, and in Menifee, 169 closed. Now, correlation does not necessarily equal causation. However, there is a correlation here with steeper price drops in Marietta and Menifee, and a higher number of total closed sales last month, and the less significant price drop in Temecula, resulting in perhaps fewer closings in this city last month. Essentially saying that here in Temecula, prices have not really come down as much as they have in the other two cities, resulting perhaps in fewer sales as of last month. That's going to wrap up this Temecula Market Report. Thank you so much for your support. Don't forget to subscribe. We'll see you again next week with a neighborhood tour. We're looking at Crown Hill. I'll be back next week and have a great weekend. Take care, everybody.